Today, I'm going to walk you through SciSpace's new literature review tool. I've done other videos on SciSpace talking about their Copilot tool and their Chrome extension that uses their Copilot tool anywhere on Chrome. And today, I'm going to talk about the new tool that they've released, which is their literature review tool. It's really similar to Elicit's tool with maybe some pros and cons compared to Elicit, and I'll do a video comparing the two later on. Today, I just want to kind of introduce you to the tools so that if you're currently looking for literature or trying to write a research article or anything like that, you can go ahead and get started using this tool. So this is SciSpace, and if you come over to their sidebar, you can go to Tools and to literature review. And I will have a link to SciSpace in the description below. And this is their literature review tool. So essentially it's just a way for you to basically put in a question or a statement and be able to get relevant research articles kind of delivered to you. So in this case, I'm going to do a field that I'm super familiar with. So I'm gonna say, how are steroids analyzed by ion mobility spectrum. And it does say if you're asking a question to add a question mark to the end. So I'm going to go ahead and add a question mark. And then I'm just going to press enter. This is going to try and find different research articles that could be helpful to the question that you're asking. So in the results page, the first thing you're going to see is insights from the top five papers. This is basically a really quick outline of the top results that are going to happen. It gives you a quick overview sentence. So steroids are analyzed by ion mobility using various techniques. One approach is using LC with IMSMS, which can increase the resolution of isomers. And then along with LC, it talks about three different LC methods with varying trade-offs between chromatographic resolution and runtime have been developed. You can see that it has two citations here. One thing that I would like is for it to actually have different citations on each of these. So for example, this should have one set of citations and then this sentence actually comes from a different study. So that should have a citation. And then this one comes from a third study where you can see this says basically the, this one comes from application of group one metal adduction, which is included in this review, but I think it would be a little bit better if they actually attach the actual research article to these two statements here versus a review that just covers that research article. Another approach is the use of metal adduction and multimer formation. Um, and so this is in this paper here, which is a newer paper, but it's also discussed in um, both of these citations as well. And then they talk about the derivatization of steroids and formation of multimers. And so this is coming from this paper again, the only issue, like there's nothing wrong with this overall insight section here. The only issue with this is that the citations that they're pulling are more referencing other research articles versus actually being able to pull a citation for that research article itself. So then the next main area we have here is the actual results. So I think this is probably a little bit more of an important area. The insights from top paper might be able to give you a few like general overview statements, but overall I would confirm every single insight it gives you with the actual paper it's addressing because you could easily start citing like this paper, this application of group one metals for this, and that would be wrong. Like this should be this LC paper. And I know this because most of them are my papers or they're in the field that I've spent a lot of time studying. So I actually know this, but if you're someone new to the field, it can be really easy to just take something AI writes and use it, not knowing that either it's being cited somewhat incorrectly. So if you're if you're talking about a research that's being done, you want to talk, you want to cite that actual research paper. You don't want to cite another research paper talking about that research paper, or it could actually give you incorrect information. So you always want to be double checking. This is just to get kind of a high level overview. So then it shows your different papers. So initially it's going to show 10 papers. And then you can see down here, you can say show more papers. You also have filtering available here. So you can filter for showing only the papers of PDF, only the papers that are open access. You can filter by year. So you could really quickly do a last five years filter and we can apply that and it will re-update your results. So you can see now we're getting only papers from the last five years. 
And then you can see publication type. So whether it's a journal article, book chapter, book, patent, or proceeding. Now, one thing that I think would be really cool is if they could also allow you to only look for research articles or only look for reviews or be able to organize that in some way as well. I think it can be really helpful when you're trying to do a true literature review. You primarily want to, for your story, be pulling only from research articles. Versus when you're trying to learn your field, it is better to actually pull from primarily reviews to begin with and then move to research articles. So I think that is one thing that I would like to have added so that it's a little bit easier to find the papers that you specifically want. So within the actual table itself, it's giving you the name of the paper. It tells you if it's open access, and it will also uh, have a link to the PDF if there's a PDF available. And then you can actually see some of the information that it gives. So it's going to give insights from the paper, a TLDR, basically a short synopsis of that paper, the conclusions that the paper generated. And I think I've added like all the columns here. So initially, I think it only gives you these three columns and you can always add columns up here. So now I'm selecting for all the columns here and I'm going to click apply so that it will add in those columns for me. So you can see, again, insights, a TLDR conclusions, a summarized abstract, the results, the summarized introduction, the methods used, a literature survey that it's still pulling up, limitations, contributions, and practical implication are the different types of columns that you can add. And so in this, the question is, is all of this actually accurate? And looking at this, this is a review. So I think it's going to be a little bit difficult to get really good information from a review because I think a lot of these are a little bit made for research articles. So let's look at this one. I talked about this article a lot on my channel. I've done text summarizations of it and stuff like that. So let's look at this one real quick. So the insight is really broad. I think this is an insight that you could say for a lot of at least my papers that are going to appear in this list. It's not really specific to what this actual paper accomplished. It's basically just saying that IMS has shown promise. And I think this is even in my introduction. It's not even like in my conclusion or anything. TLDR basically found that we were successfully able to separate steroids as dimer addicts of grip one metals. That is accurate. And then it may provide additional metric contributing to analyte identification. This part, they're missing the CCS component of that. That is what is that additional metric. So pretty accurate there. They're just missing a little bit of the component there. Twins successfully st separate steroids as dimer dimeric adducts. That's true. And nitrogen CCS values were within 1% error. I mean, yeah, that's pretty much kind of the two different sections of it. I think it might have been a little bit interesting for them to include more of the like different steroids we measured and stuff like that. But overall, that is accurate. The study focuses on the separation of steroids using eye mobility. Traveling wave spectrometry successfully separates steroids. So that's the summarized abstract. The results is basically the same as the conclusions there. The summarized introduction is the study focuses on the separation of steroids and TWIMS was used. I would have liked to have seen the summarized introduction include a little bit more of the literature that we were talking about, like how did this add to it? And maybe even some more of the background information, like what steroids are, what TWIMS IMS is stuff like that. So the methods used was TWIMS IMS and, um, and group one metal adduction for the separation of steroids. That is accurate. It says Copilot couldn't generate a response there. There's NA for limitations. And the contributions is development of an IMS separation analysis for steroids and successful separation. See, this is more what I would have wanted to see as the impact, but I guess they're labeling that more as the contributions. And then TWIMS can separate steroid isomers using grip one metal adducts and CCSs can be measured. So yeah, this is really, really repetitive. Obviously, it's generating the exact same stuff for all these different columns. So I don't know how much you would need all these different columns. This is fairly accurate. I just don't know if I wouldn't only rely on what it's pulling to say that these were the only conclusions or these were the only results. I think digging deeper, if this is an interesting paper, this is a good way to weed out. Is this actually a paper I'm interested in or not? I wouldn't only use this instead of actually digging into the research article. So now one major benefit of SciSpace developing this new literature review tool is that Copilot is actually integrated in. 
So there's a couple different places that you can use Copilot. So for example, this ask a question here is a way to get to use Copilot for the insight section here. You can ask a follow-up question for any specific paper within this list. And then there's the actual Copilot module down here. So if you just open this up, you can see that it has suggestions, but it's actually going to apply to all of these papers instead of only applying to a single paper. So I'm gonna say, can you identify any novel methodologies or approaches used in these papers? So you can see that it gives me several different methodologies here. One novel approach is the use of metal adduction and multimer formation, bookie reaction, like using group one metal adduction in twins. That's really similar to what it said before. And then the review paper highlights it. So while this is good, I wanna actually know which paper these are coming from. So I'm gonna re-ask the question, can you identify any novel methodologies or approaches used in these papers? and include citations to which papers they came from. So that's still not doing it. So before, whenever I did that, it was able to update it with the actual citation. Currently, it's not doing that. So maybe I can ask a follow-up and say, can you include the titles of the papers that these methodologies came from? So there we go. We finally were able to get it to actually pull in the citations for each of the different ones. But you can see now it only gave me the three. I think it's the first three that it was giving me instead of all of them. So that part is a little bit tricky with it, but at least now you're able to use something like Copilot on multiple different papers at a time instead of only on a single paper. Now you can still use it only on a single paper. So you can like ask a follow-up question here and it's gonna say, ask a question on and include the paper here. So that is one thing that is really nice is that you can now use Copilot um, amongst a lot of different papers at a time. Now, the last part of this is how can you get information saved or out of this space? And so one thing that's nice, and you can see once you use Copilot, it automatically will save your search, but it now has my saved searches in here and it has my Copilot messages saved as well. So if you are logged in, you can actually save your searches here. You can see right here, it has this little blue search button. All you have to do is click save and it's going to save it to your list with your Copilot information. And then if you wanna get this actually out of SciSpace, you can click these three dots here and you can click export CSV. The export CSV is going to give you access to all of this information. One thing I've noted is, is that outside of basically the insights and the TLDR, it doesn't do a great job of pulling down the information for these other columns here. A lot of times it will just say NA or it will error out. So that's one thing to be careful of. It's not gonna be as easy to get this information out currently. Now, one thing is though, is because it's a saved, you can always come back and view it within SciSpace as well. I hope that this has been a good introduction into this tool and hopefully you can use it. My one disclaimer is that anything related to AI, you always wanna make sure that you're double checking that information. If you're working on trying to learn your field and you're struggling with what papers to read, you can download my 30-day research jumpstart guide below. That link will be in the description below. And I will leave up here a few other videos on tools related to finding literature using AI. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.